Hello and welcome to another tutorial from OpenShading.com. My name is Thomas Dinges and today I'm going to show you how you can create some basic patterns in OSL. So I have a very simple geometry here, just a flat surface and I already prepared some um, basics here. So we have the STD OSL header file and a basic shader declaration. We have two float values here an output and we have a point. The point is a free component data type in OSL and it consists of the actual coordinates of our geometry. And this is what we are using to create some simple lines and later on also some sign patterns. So let's start. I define a float variable, let's call it t, and I assign the first component of our point here. And let's see how that looks. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to output this, of course. So now we can see the result. But this is not really what we want. We only want the straight line here and not this pattern here. So what we need is the absolute value of t. In order to get that, we can call the inbuilt apps function from OSL. In case our variable is negative, it will return the positive counterpart. So if we have minus 5, then it will return 5. Recompile and now we only have our line here. Okay, let's talk a bit about coordinates in OSL in general. Per default, all the coordinates here are in world space, which means that if I move my mesh, the pattern is not moving with it. Because it uses the world coordinates, but we want to use it uh, to let it use the object space. We can transform it. OSL has some inbuilt functions to do that. So I need a new point. Let's call it pause again and I change the input here so I don't have to change it here so point pos equals and then we call the transform function and now uh, we need to provide OSL with the information uh, we, what we need and we would like the object space so transform it to object space and the input is vec Recompile, and now you see our pattern stays on top of our mesh. Okay, let's uh, add another value or just rename this one to intensity and divide the output. So we can control the intensity of our pattern. So I can now decrease it or increase it. Okay, so all we have so far is a very simple vertical line. We can also have a horizontal line by changing this to the second component of our coordinates. So now we have a horizontal line. But let's add a few more lines to this. So I will keep that, but I will add an offset of uh, 0 0.5. And uh, I will add another one above. So I will take my existing variable t and multiply it with uh, pos1, but this time I do the negation so now I have two lines here this is just a short form of the actual thing if you're not familiar with programming this is the short form for t equals t multiplied plus 1 minus 
0.5. So this is just short form, so we don't have to uh, write the parameter again. Okay, let's add two vertical lines here. So we call T, multiply it again, this time with the first component, and let's add 0 0.5 again, so it doesn't appear in the center. Okay. And do it once more, so we get the counterpart again, minus 0 0.5. So now we have four basic lines here. And this is an easy but quite nice pattern already. Okay, so for example, let's add one more line and this time a diagonal one. In order to do that, we can just take the two components and subtract them or uh, add them to each other. So I again take T and then I take POS and add POS1 to it. And then I get a diagonal line. So let's change this diagonal line to a sign function. So what I need is, first of all, let's add this into brackets and then add a sign function to it. So I call the sign function and provide the second parameter. And this should work. Yep. Now we have a sign pattern here. We don't see much because the wave period is quite big. So we can multiply this with uh, Let's call it wave. And now I can change that. And as you can see, when I increase the value, my wave period becomes smaller and then we can see the actual sign pattern. We can also change the amplitude of our sign by multiplying the result with amplitude. So I need a new value here. Float amplitude recompile. Oh, I made a mistake. Ah, 1m too much. And now I can decrease this. And then you can see the pattern a bit better. Okay, so this is really simple, but I hope it gets you up and running with the basics of uh, pattern generation. And I hope you also got an idea about the coordinate system here. If you have any further questions about that, feel free to post on the blog or on YouTube beneath the video. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time again and have fun with OSL. Bye.